Hello everyone, Miss Davis here. I hope this assembly finds you and your family safe and well. You may be wondering why I've put a photo of my mum and I with an alpaca at the beginning of the assembly. Well, this photo was taken two summers ago. My mum always wanted to go to an alpaca farm, so for Christmas I bought her an alpaca experience. So off we went on the 18th of August 2018 to the Welsh countryside and had a lovely day with the alpacas. My mum and I have now made it a tradition to do a new experience each summer, although this year's may look a little bit different. So how does this link to today's assembly? Well, today we are going to be looking at British summertime traditions and some of the national and local events that take place in the UK each summer. Welcome to today's assembly on British culture and traditions in the summer. What is a tradition? A tradition is a belief, principle or way of acting that people in a particular society or group have continued to follow for a long time, or all of these beliefs, in particular society or groups. A tradition is often linked to the culture of a group of people religion or demographic location. What British traditions do we have in the summer? We have lots of British traditions that we take part in throughout the year, from dressing up at Halloween to enjoying a Sunday roast dinner or an afternoon tea. Over the next few slides we are going to look at some that we look forward to in the summer months. However, although lots of these won't be going ahead this year due to the pandemic, they are a reminder of the many important and exciting events that we have in the UK and can look forward to doing again in the future. Wimbledon is the oldest tennis tournament in the world and widely considered the most prestigious. It has been held at the All England Club in London since 1877. It is one of the four Grand Slam tennis tournaments, the others being the Australian Open, the French Open and the US Open. Since the Australian Open shifted to hard court in 1988, Wimbledon is the only major still played on grass, the game's original surface, which gave the game its original name of lawn tennis. The tournament takes place over two weeks in late June and early July, culminating with the ladies and gentlemen singles final, scheduled for the second Saturday and Sunday respectively. Wimbledon makes around 40 million in profit and attracts half a million visitors to London. This is obviously fantastic for the economy, as well as spectators being able to see world-class tennis matches. The Edinburgh Festival Fringe is the world's largest arts festival, which spans 25 days and features more than 55,000 performances of 3,548 different shows in 317 venues. Established in 1947 as an alternative to the Edinburgh International Festival, it takes place annually in Edinburgh, Scotland, in the month of August. The Edinburgh Fringe Festival has become a world lead in celebration of arts and culture, surpassed only by the Olympics and the FIFA World Cup in terms of global ticketed events. It is an open access performing arts festival, meaning there is no selection committee and anyone may participate with any type of performance. The official Fringe programme categorises shows into sections for theatre, comedy, dance, physical theatre, circus, cabaret, children's shows, musicals, opera, music, spoken word, exhibitions and events. Pride in London is an annual LGBT Pride Festival and Parade held each summer in London, starting in 1972. Pride in London celebrates the diversity of the LGBT community with the colourful Pride in London Parade, as well as the free festivity events that take place in Trafalgar Square. This event brings together thousands of people of all genders, ethnicities, sexualities and races. It is one of the longest running in the country and attracts an estimated 1 million visitors to the city. It all began in the summer of 1958 in West London when racial tensions grew in the Afro-Caribbean community. 
Riots went on for three days with over 100 people getting arrested over the bank holiday weekend. In 1959, the human rights activist, Claudia Jones, decided to organise an indoor Caribbean carnival to bring all the communities together. That's when the concept of the Notting Hill Carnival came about. 50 years on, the festival still attracts up to 2 million visitors a year from all over the world to the streets of London during the August Bank Holiday weekend. This annual celebration is organised and managed by the people of West, British West Indian communities and it is a significant happening for the Black British culture in London. Notting Hill Carnival is the second biggest festival in the world after Brazil's Rio Carnival and it is 11 times bigger than Glastonbury Festival. The festival consists of a parade, bands and musics playing the sounds of Africa and the Caribbean and Afro-Caribbean street food. Moving a bit closer to home now, we have St Paul's Carnival, which is an annual African-Caribbean carnival held usually on the first Saturday of July in St Paul's, Bristol. The celebration began life in 1968 as the St Paul's Festival, when the idea was to create an event to help improve relationships between the European, African, Caribbean and Asian inhabitants of the area. Called the St Paul's Carnival since 1991, the event includes a masquerade per procession with highly ornate and colourful costumes and floats from local schools and cultural associations, a stage for professional performers, sound systems in neighbouring streets and a range of stalls selling food from a wide range of cultures. Now to an event that I'm sure most of you are very familiar with, Glastonbury. Glastonbury Festival is a five-day festival of contemporary performing arts that takes place at Worthy Farm in Somerset. In addition to contemporary music, the festival hosts dance, comedy, theatre, circus, cabaret and other arts. Leading pop and rock artists have headlined alongside thousands of others appearing on smaller stages and performance areas. Regarded as a major event in British culture, it takes place towards the end of June. The festival is inspired by the ethos of the hippie counterculture and free festival movements. After the 1970s, the festival has taken place almost every year and has grown in size, although it does take a break around every five years to allow the ground to recover. The Bristol International Balloon Fiesta is held annually in Bristol. Teams from the UK and other parts of the world bring their hot air balloons to the site and participate in mass ascents where as many as 100 balloons may launch at a time. The event was first held in 1979 and is now one of the largest in Europe. It is common to have crowds of over 100,000 people on each of the four days of the festival. It takes place in Ashton Court. Mass launches are made twice a day at 6am and 6pm subject to weather conditions. One popular attraction is the night glow, when balloons are inflated and glow to music after dark. These are held on the opening Thursday night at approximately 9.30pm, followed by a spectacular fireworks display. There is another night glow at the same time followed by the fireworks on the Saturday night. The Bristol Harbour Festival is a festival held annually in Bristol and which celebrates the city's maritime heritage and the importance of Bristol's docks and harbour. Most of the activities, including live music, street performances, fireworks and a variety of other live entertainments, are held on or near the waterfront of Bristol Harbour. Venues include Queen Square, the Amphitheatre, Millennium Square and Castle Park, with seagoing vessels moored nearby. The liveliest part of the festival is the quayside, but the main attractions are entertainment designed to engage all the communities of Bristol, as well as entertain the thousands of visitors to the city. The city has hosted the festival since 1971, when it was started as part of an ultimately successful attempt to save the docks from being filled in. These are only a few of the amazing events that we can attend in the UK and Bristol. These events are so important, not only for the British economy, but also for people to experience important cultural and sporting events, 
They can provide entertainment, history and give people lifelong treasured memories with their friends and families. Making this assembly has made me really appreciate the diverse events that we can go to, many for free. I know I'm going to miss some of these myself this year, but we will be able to go to them again, hopefully next summer. And I would urge you to try and experience some of the events I have shown you today. But until then, we can be like alpacas. Enjoy the fresh air, the beautiful countryside and people that love to take photos with us. Stay safe and I hope to see you all soon. See you all soon.